Hey YouTubers, it's Mark Warnke, the goat guy. So uh, I'm here to teach you about everything about goats and how to, how to raise them, all the different nuances. Um, goats are easy but hard. Um, you, you need to know what you're doing and everything from kind of cradle to grave. And we have all the courses for you available on packgoats.com. Milk, meat, birthing, raising babies running a, a ranch, all the different things that you're gonna to need to know to get into goats. And we hope you find these videos helpful. We do these as helpful hints, but to get into the really in-depth information and learn the whole thing, um, courses at less than a hundred bucks are gonna be worth their weight in gold for you. So um, I wanna to talk to you about putting goats down. Um, it happens, you gotta put them down. And in my experience, having the vet put them down has been excruciating um, and and I want to make sure I'm not critical of my vet but I have had consistently when a goat's really sick it's super difficult to get a good vein and to get it into the system and it has been a languishing on and taking a long time to die I do recommend that you just do what it takes do it on your own and, and put them down with a bullet to the back of the head. And I have Merciless and Thorn here who I recently put down. I saved their skulls out of like honoring their life. And uh, I, ha I keep them here in what we call the Ripple Center. I think that animals and everything that's living carries energy and uh, goats are an amazing, beautiful part of this family and to have their energy kind of represented around our fireplace and around this building has always been important to me. So, but I wanna show you kind of like how to, how to do it and then also I'm gonna teach you a little bit about teeth and what goes on. Now this is Merciless. Merciless was 10 going on 11. Um, his last winter, he was super skinny we knew his problem was his teeth. And so I wanna show you the teeth of a unhealthy goat. Um, he literally doesn't have but two molars left. And these molars are below the gum line. So he barely had any teeth exposed. And what happens is they can't, they can't chew their cud. And when they can't chew their cud, um, they're not able to process all their food and we file their teeth. You can see that he doesn't have big points on them because we have floated his teeth throughout his life, but he just began to lose his teeth and they were wearing so low he wasn't able to effectively chew his cut anymore. This is what kills a goat is their teeth. And so keeping good track of their teeth, floating their teeth for the first time, usually we find that it shows up in, in needing to be done at about six and then you wanna do it about once every other year after that. So most goats will float their teeth three times throughout their life. And we've learned how to do it on our own and we have sedatives. Um, this is a next level thing to do though. You need to be quite experienced with both the sedatives and with the tools. It's a good thing to just call a vet in. And the only people out there, the vets that know how to do it is horse people and their tools are too big, so they need smaller, smaller tools so they can get in there and float their teeth well. Also, in speaking about putting a goat down, when you put a goat down, the skull and how it's formed, this is the part of their skull that's massive. This is a huge amount of bone, and it's very difficult to enter the brain case through, through here. You can enter it through their ear, so you, you, you gotta remember that here is, here is the brain contained in this section right here. Um, there's a little bit up front, but the majority of it is back here. Here's the, I believe this is called the occipital condyle. Here's where the base stem, it, it attaches to the spinal cord that's coming down. And, but the main brain case is right here. This is the ear hole. So you can actually enter uh, right behind the ear hole and get it, but you can also see this massive amount of bone right here. This is a lot of bone for a bullet to penetrate. And so the best place I believe, and in my experience to enter the brain case with a bullet is right between the horns, right at the backside. So you can actually see the bullet hole that entered his brain. And what I do 
is when a goat is eating, um, and that's what I always do is I give them their last bucket of grain. I put a bucket of grain down, I let them have their bite, I, I pet them, I'm with them, you know, and they'll put their, their, put their head down and then I go in right behind the head. And you actually see when a goat's head is down in there, it's important to kind of angle the bullet or the gun back. And what I shoot them with is a, a 380. Um, it's, a, it's a smaller round, a nine millimeter is nice, a 45 is too much. So the two, and, and I've always been scared of a 22 mag not being enough to enter the brain case. And so I've never done it with a 22 mag, um, but I really suggest a nine millimeter or a, uh, or a 380. And when you have a compact gun, it makes it easy to kind of get it behind the horns and then angle it back into the skull. And that's what I've found to be best. You can see on Merciless, it didn't actually exit the skull at all. The bullet actually just went in, penetrated this, hit the brain, and then didn't come out the bottom. So that is how I recommend you do it. Um, and, it, and, it and it works instantly. Their legs fold up, they flop over on their side, the lights are out, they're done instantly. And so it's a very quick you know, process to put them down that way. So. The other thing I want to mention is, is that the bullets that you use should be a solid, um, meaning a fully copper jacketed, not one that opens up. And, and I've always been careful about it, but in this situation, uh, my 380 is one of my personal defense weapons, and I didn't realize that in the clip was mixed an expandable bullet, one with the cone on the inside where the, the bullet actually expands. And I want to show you the difference in thorn skull um, when I used that, it doesn't do any worse at killing them. It just, it, 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 does, it does more damage to the whole head and the case and everything. This makes a nice clean little pencil hole and it's just kind of a, a cleaner way to be able to do it. But so teaching you about teeth as well. So to pull up in reference, thorn skull, and these are big goats, you know, these are goats that weigh over 200 pounds, they're big goats. And um, Thorn was uh, Thorn was also dealing with, and now you look at those teeth and you go, well, Mark, he's got a head full of teeth. And he does, but you gotta remember, all these were below the gum line. So you had, these teeth were not exposed anymore. He had nothing to grind to. He just had these front ones and they weren't opposing one another well. He was dealing with the same thing. He just wasn't able to process his, his food. And so he was struggling with, with that. Um, but what I wanna do is show you the difference in the bullet impact when you use an expandable. You can see the size of that hole. And the other thing that was interesting, which I wouldn't have expected, is the bullet actually came out the bottom as well. So you can see where it came out right there. There's the outside of the hole. And when uh, I actually have a taxidermist do these for me, that the whole back of his skull was actually blown separate and he had to glue it back together to, to, to get it to, to be back in one piece. So something to know kind of about bullet types, about the caliber that you might use, where you want to actually shoot the goat as well. And um, I hope you find that helpful. This is a bit of a a difficult subject. Um, nobody, including me, likes to put down their goats, um, but I would also tell you that by doing it yourself, it's all uh, loving hands, loving intention, um, and one of the greatest gifts that you can give to your goat is to be put down by the person who loves them, but it takes a lot of courage and it's not um, an easy job. So. I hope that if you're watching this video that you find the, the, the knowing what to do part of it um, gets settled in for you. And um, I'm sorry if you're dealing with that right now in your goat life. Um, I, kn I, I know how you're feeling because I love these guys too. And um, yeah, so, so that's kind of what I recommend. So I hope you find that helpful. Mark Warnke, the goat guy, signing out. Oh, my God.